Alright, welcome back. I've got something pretty cool for you guys this week. Um, I've been experimenting with um, a lot of the elements, like water, fire, and and ever, as you might have seen my ice effect on Photoshop TV not too long ago. So I'm always experimenting with different ways of achieving, you know, pretty complex effects. And one of the things I've been messing with is creating the bead sweat effect that you see on chilled bottles and, you know, beer bottles and stuff like that. And short of going in and creating a layer style with the water effect and then going in and painstakingly painting each bubble on the bottle, I have f uh, figured out a way to do it with just a few filters right here in Photoshop. It's really cool. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I need to do, so I've got my image of my bottle here. I'm going to go over here, I'm going to create a new layer. And we're going to fill this layer with a neutral 50% gray. And then we're going to go to Filter, Render. Now before I go to this, make sure you have your foreground and background colors set to their default settings, which black would be in the foreground, white in the background. And on this gray layer, go to Render, Fibers. Now in here I just pick any old random setting here. I just click random until I see something that looks okay because it doesn't really matter because we're going to manip manipulate it even further after this. So just hit OK. And now, just go under Filter to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And give it a pretty good size blur. Not too much where it's almost lost all its detail, but just about like that. And we'll hit OK. Next, I'm going to go over to Image, Adjustment, Levels. And now we're going to boost that contrast in that area there, making those dark areas. This will play into the randomness of the bubbles when we go to generate that effect here in a second. Go about like that, and we'll just hit OK. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We're going to go under Filter, and we're going to go to Texture, Stained Glass. And no, we're not going for a stained glass effect, but we're going to use this to achieve what we want. Now in here I can you, know, you can see if I increase the settings we're getting a stained glass look, but it's not exactly what I'm going for. I want to bring this down to where it's just a bunch of random tiny shapes in there. And I can mess with these settings to you know tweak it a little bit more. But that's about what I'm going for, so I'm just going to hit OK. Now, I'm going to zoom in so you can get a better uh, look at what's going on in here. There's our random shapes in there. Now the next thing I want to do, I'm going to go under Filter. This time we're going to go to Sketch, Plaster. Now these are all absurd named filters to achieve what we're going to do. We're not going for a plaster or a stained glass effect, but you can see already what we're starting to get here is our random bubble effect. Now I can use these settings here and tweak it, the number of bubbles I want, how random they are, and anything like that, how small or large they are, and that's pretty cool that I have that kind of control over that. And it's much easier than going in and painting each one of these little bubbles in there. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And there we see our bubbles. Now I want to get rid of all this black in here, in this uh, background area right in here. So I'm going to skip my magic wand tool here and just click anywhere in that black area. And it will select all that. Let's make sure you have contiguous so it doesn't select anything inside the shapes in there. You just want the general range of black in there. So click in there. I'm just going to hit delete and deselect. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. So you can see there we have our random bubble going on. But now I need to make it conform to the shape of this bottle here. So I'm going to bring up my free transform which is Command or Control T. And I'm going to control or right click on this shape. Bring up my warp tool. And I'm just going to grab these corners here and manipulate them into the shape of the bottle. I'm not being real exact because when we do the final touch here, a lot of these areas are going to disappear. And if I wanted to, I could simply delete these bubbles that are outside the area of the bottle. So that's not going to be a problem. Get it just about like that. Pretty much to us right in the shape of the bottle there. I'm just going to hit OK or hit Enter. Now, I'm going to zoom in again so you can see how this effect changes to 
really sell the effect. All I gotta do now is change my blending mode to overlay. And look at that. Isn't that cool? There you have it. Generated a really cool random bubbling effect in just a few short steps. So, practice with it, have fun with it, and we'll see you next time.